hey guys welcome back to my channel today so this is the my clothing youtube channel where we teach you how to use patterns to create unlimited design just like the one you're seeing on the screen now so if that's what you're interested in learning how to make keep watching this video to the end subscribe to this channel like this video leave a comment in the comment section so this design is actually it's kind of a pleated cape dress the inner part of it is a tube so that is what we are going to learn how to make in this tutorial. I'm going to be giving detailed explanations on how I came about this very particular design. So if that's what you want to learn how to do, learn. let's head straight to the pattern drafting. So firstly, you'll be doing your basic bodies front. And I'm going to be attaching an additional pattern paper to the shoulder area. So it's kind of extended outwards a little. And I'm going ahead to measure one inch. I initially measured 1.5, so I figured 1.5 is going to make the extension too much, so I used one inch for it. And then I'll go ahead to use my ruler to extend my shoulder slip line to that very point, like so. So I haven't done that now, I'm going to be marking 1.5 inches, this part is optional, it's actually where you want your cape to sit on. So this part is optional, you can take yours to be a bit wider, this part is totally optional, but here I used 1.5 inches and I'm using my ruler to connect that 1.5 inches to the very tip of my waistline. And this is what it looks like, okay. So I haven't done that now, the next thing I'm going to do is to get my back bodies, okay, and I'm also going to be attaching a fresh pattern paper at the shoulder and armhole area for the extension of the back bodies also. Just exactly the same thing we did to the front, that is what I'm going to be doing to the back. I went ahead to tape it down like so. I also go ahead to mark out one inch. Because I now use my ruler to extend it, the shoulder slope to that one inch line. Then I'll be extending this one inch line all the way down to this point like so. For the back and for the front i'll go ahead to extend it all the way down to this very point like so. and then i'll use my scissors to cut out the excesses so i can know exactly what i'm working with If you haven't subscribed to this channel please do want to subscribe like this video give it a thumbs up and you can also watch other videos in the channel okay also share this video to other platforms where you feel they will be needed so i'm cutting out the excesses around it like so so i haven't done that the next thing we are going to do now is to make sure we face this part together if you face it like this it's going to be wrong because the neckline they are not an aligning so you have to turn this over so the neckline can align shoulder to shoulder neckline to neckline of the back and the front and i'll use my tape to hold it down so now i've held it down the next thing i'm going to do is to use my ruler to measure out my cape see that pleated part i'm going to use my ruler to get it like to measure it out so what I did was I used my tape to measure out how wide, like how many inches I want the cape to be. And for the sake of this tutorial, I used 4 inches. This is also optional. You can decide on how much you want yours to be. Depending on if you want yours to be exactly like the one on the screen, you can decide on how wide you want it to be. I hear I used 4 inches. It's totally optional. So I extended that 4 inch line to the beginning of the cape. That is the one, inch, the one inch extension on the armhole on the shoulder area. Same thing we're also doing to the back. 
you're going to be using your tape to determine how much you want it to be i'm trying to draw out that very part at the back because you know the back pattern we flipped it over to the back so i'm trying to get that very line at the back also then from there i'll go ahead to measure and then i'll complete the cape of my back like so so the next thing we are going to do is to trace out the whole of the cape we are going to be tracing out the whole of the cape so i'm gonna have to trace out the whole of the cape as you can see i do not include my dart because of course the cape is not going to be fitted okay there's needless including the dart the cape isn't going to be fitted so we don't need the dart i also went ahead to mark major points like my shoulder bust point on the bust so when i'm attaching the cape to the bodies i do not make a mistake it's attached and is aligned properly so this is what the cape looks like with all the measure with all the labeling it's okay so i haven't done that now we're going to be separating the front and the back so we can work on them differently remember there is a tube inside where the cape is covering as a sleeve from the half length or the waist all the way to the back okay so there's a tube inside so now we're going ahead to work on our front bodies so first we'll try to create that very beautiful neckline at the tube area from the very tip of my neck i'll go ahead to mark six inches also this is optional depending i do not love to I don't want to leave any cleavage so i'm trying to mark something that is going to be modest also so i marked six inches and from the six inches i marked half an inch to take it upwards a little to create that slanting effect and i'm going to be ruling a line to join that half inch to the six inch mark like so so now on the very line that slanted line i marked 0 0.5 inches and i'm going to be connecting it to my center front like so i actually felt this was small but i think 0 0.5 inches is perfect so i had to increase it and i think the more i increased it it actually made my that very opening it made it to be deep so 0 0.5 inches is perfect i had to increase it but please do not increase it leave it at 0 0.5 inches i increased it to 0 0.8 but please leave it at 0 0.5 inches then i went ahead to connect it to my center front like so on the chest line area on the chest line okay i'll use my marker to mark this out so you guys can see what it looks like now considering the fact that that cape like stuff went into this very part like it looks like it was sewn on this part okay whether it was tacked with a needle or it was sewn on it so i'm going to be making sure now that my style line for my shoulder princess scene is going to be coming into that place where the cape will be formed i don't know if i'm making sense but as you watch you will understand what i'm talking about so I'm going ahead now to close my waist dart and to open it at my side bust. So I'll use my cello tape to hold this down. So now the next thing I'm going to do is because I want to extend my shoulder princessing to this very line. Okay, I'm going to extend the point to this line. And now to create my shoulder princessing. I'm going to be opening this slash line, close my side bust dart, and open it at that slash line. I hope you guys understand what I'm saying. Just watch closely. I'm closing this now, and I've opened it here. So we've created a shoulder princess scene. So it's going to be in alignment with where, with where the cape will be attached. So we can get a nice fit, okay? So now I'm going to be creating the shape of my tube 
because actually this dress is a tube with that cape forming a sleeve so i'm going to be creating the shape of my tube it does not matter whether you leave it curvy or straight the sleeve is going to be the cape is going to be covering it up but just make sure you get it right okay doesn't matter whether it's curvy or it's straight just make sure you get it right because the cape is going to cover it so it's not going to be showing whether it's curvy or it's straight just make sure it's not gapping and i'm going to show you how to do that right now so it does not gap considering the fact that this is a tube okay and we've cut out some parts we are going to now impute our contour guidelines so that the tube is resting perfectly on our body the first contour guideline I'm going to impute is the armhole contour guideline where I'm going to be drawing the straight line from my armhole to the actual point okay and then I'll be creating my dart 0.4 inches maximum 0.5 inches no matter how big you are maximum 0.5 inches so I'm going to be connecting those two points that dart to this point okay the next contour guideline I'm going to be marking out is my neckline contour guideline so the center does not gap armhole is so that the armhole because it's a tube is going to be very tight and fitted on you center contour guideline is so that the neckline does not gap since it's a tube okay it's not a high neck we already have a whole lot that is cut out so now I'm going to be closing up those darts and opening them at that very part close that of the armhole I'm going to have to close the dart of the neckline okay so remember all these darts that we closed we opened them at this point and of course we're going to be cutting this out and then sewing up the other parts just keep watching please I may not really be explaining the video you understand but once you watch the video thoroughly you understand it So because some lines are broken, I used my marker to retrace them out. Then the next thing I'm going to do is to use my scissors and cut them out like so. So we'll be discarding all this, we don't need it now. And then I'm going to have to cut this part out like so. So this is basically what the tube of our front is going to look like. This is the pattern for the front. Okay, so I'm labeling center front. And of course, everything you need to label so you do not forget. It's very necessary you label whenever you're doing pattern draft so you do not forget while sewing. Now heading straight to the back, which is actually very simple. There is nothing complicating about the back. How to draw this line so I can see it clearly, okay? How to draw that line so I can see it clearly because it was only obvious at the back, which was where we used to trace out the cape. So I marked how deep I want my back neckline to be, okay? This is also optional, that's why I did not cut the measurements. And from that length I marked out deep, I went up by half an inch. And also to create a slanting line, I'm going to be joining it like so. Just like we did to the front. Then I'll go ahead to trace out my tube neckline all the way to the armhole. So like I said, this can be straight, it can be curvy, it's not... That's not really the issue. Whether it's straight or curvy, just make sure you get it right. So I arrived at this. Okay. And of course, I'll use my marker to make it visible enough so you guys can see it.
So now I went ahead to extend the dart, the bust about measurement to that very line where the cape is going to be attached. I was trying to find a way to manipulate this dart so we don't have to, you know, so much. Like we're not going to be sewing a whole lot of things, but I found out that it's not going to work. So we're going to be sewing up the dart of the back. I like to kind of manipulate it so we can close up the dart and not have to sew it on the fabric, but it didn't work. So we are definitely going to be sewing the dart for the back and you see that as we go on in this tutorial. So this is me right here trying to see if I can close up this dart and open it up somewhere that we will not be needing it. But then it didn't work. And you guys should just follow me. Just come along with me. Follow the tutorial and you'll see what I'm trying to explain actually. So I'm cutting that very line. That part where we are going to be attaching the cape. And you can see that place is actually open. At this point my ring light was beginning to give me issues. So I had to turn on the switch. And use it that way. But I believe you guys can still see it clearly. So since that part is open, I went ahead to tape it down and it was kind of giving that pointed, that part was pointed and of course we are working in flat patterns so we don't want any pointed whatever, we want the patterns to lay flat. I had to open up that dart so it can lay flat, that was the only way the pattern is going to lay flat, meaning we are going to be sewing our back dart. So I went ahead to detach this part so we can have our tube. And this is what our back body is going to look like, okay? This is what our back body is going to look like. So if you're going to be making this design, please bear in mind that this cape actually consumes fabric. And you see that as we go on. This cape consumes fabric, so you need to have enough fabric to make this dress. So this is the front pattern, this is our back pattern, okay? We're needing this, we'll cut and fold, two pieces of this, two pieces of this, and two pieces of this. So this is my cape, okay? I'm just going to be drawing four lines as a guideline on the cape. Here it was actually three pleats, but mine, I made it four. Okay, here it was three, okay, but mine I made it four, which is optional. You can make yours three, you can make yours four, five, as much as you want, so long as you get the basics right. So we're going to be setting this aside while we work on the front and the back tube bodies. So I'm going to be cutting this on the fabric. Now we're starting with the front. I'm laying on my fabric and I'm going to be cutting this on my fabric. Please do not forget to mark your notches where necessary. Okay, you have to mark your notches where necessary. As you can see, that was what I was doing with the pen. So you have to mark your notches when necessary. So when you're sewing, it makes your work a whole lot easier. And you do not do guesswork. You're not struggling to know which is which. You're aligning everything. So make sure you mark notches. So I'm going to have to sew up the front. And this is what it looks like. You remember the one 0.8 inches I told you about that was too much? Exactly. So please leave, lot, leave yours at 0.5. I've also sewn the back. And this is what the back looks like okay so of course the next thing we're going to do is to join front and back together and set it aside for the cape now this is the cape part of it i'm going to be cutting out a base for this cape meaning i'm going to be cutting exactly this particular this whole thing out on the fabric now when you cut this hole out on the fabric you want to turn it like the way you're turning a belt, you want to turn it like a belt and iron it out to give it a nice press so the edges are not rough.
I also marked the notches. So when you sew and turn it out like a belt, you want to use your chalk and indicate those notches. Because of course you're going to be sewing up those parts. I use the scissors to make a notch. So having done that now, I'm going to be cutting just one part of the lines that I marked. I'm going to be cutting out just one part of the lines that I marked. Then place this one part. I'm just trying to show you that you're going to be sewing up, you know, okay, like a belt. That was what I'm trying to explain here. So you're going to be cutting a long strap of fabric that is a little bit bigger than that very part. Okay. And you want to cut it like the center front has to be on fold. Wherever your front is, it has to be on fold. So you want to leave a little bit gap. Okay, so I placed it and I'm going to be leaving a little bit of gap. Then I'll go ahead to cut it all the way around. Now this strap, I'm going to be cutting four of it. Four. Okay, I'm going to be cutting out four of it. You can actually cut that top to be straight it's even preferably that it's preferable that it's actually longer than the base of the cape so when you're done attaching it you can just smoothen it out to align with the base of the cape so now i've sewn the front and back together as a tube okay i used the black as my lining but it would be nice to use the same color of your fabric as your lining so I haven't attached this, like I said, I attached it on the base. Those straps, you have to attach it on the base, okay? I also use black hair as my lining. So the next thing I'm going to do now is to attach this very part following these notches. I said if you've turned yours as a belt, use your chalk to indicate those notches, okay? So now we're going to make sure that the notches align with that of the tube and of course you're going to be tacking it down on the base so that the long straps which form the plate will cover where you've tacked it nobody's going to see the tacking okay if you're also not comfortable with tacking you can sew it up but the tacking is going to be the best form of it it's going to give you your desired result so this way on that very line, of course, you know the line, we sewed it up, you're going to be tacking it up with your needle and thread with the same color, okay, of your fabric, the same color of thread as your fabric, you're going to be tacking it down. I'm showing you on one side, of course, the other side, I'm yet to do that. So you'll be tacking it, okay, to be invisible, inwards, you're going to be tacking it to be inwards, okay. So if you tack it properly, it's not going to move. If you tack everything all the way to the top, it's not going to move out of place. It's because I just held it with a needle, that's why it's moving out of place. But if you tack it down, it's not going to move out of place. So that's it for this tutorial. Okay, if you have any question, leave a comment in the comment section and I'll reply you as soon as possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!